first thing I wanted to um, um, mention is that we're, one of the reasons that we're interested in state fiscal policy is that state tax and budget state tax and budget policy is the most concrete way that we express priorities as a state. So regardless of what you might say or the statutes might say or whatever, it's what you decide to spend money on, what, how you decide to raise revenue, that's really expressing the priorities, your priorities. So that, and that's what, why, why we're interested in it, and I think that's why everybody's in, interested in that topic and why it's so important. So one of the first um, things I want to talk about is the idea of the current uh, idea of what some people call managing to the money. And this is an idea uh, that was has been around, it's not a new idea, but it's really uh, been more dominant since about after 1991 in Vermont. And essentially the idea before, in terms of balancing the budget is that you get a revenue estimate and then you look at the numbers and you say, that's how much money we have, how do we get our spending, our spending to fit the amount of money we have. And that, um, what I'd like to say about that is that that approach, while it's obviously, it's rational, I mean you have to, balancing the budget, you have to start somewhere, you have to think about it somewhere. I think the, the that there's been an excessive focus on it. Uh, primarily, uh, the evidence of that is that we spend a lot of time at estimating revenues we, during this recession four times a year. Um, we spend very little time actually doing the kind of assessment John was talking about, which is what, what, do, we, what do we need to spend money on in the state of Vermont. But managing to the money essentially views Vermonters as taxpayers primarily. And that what your th the thought is, and this was true when I was here, that taxpayers, of course, do not want their taxes to go up, and so we will try to avoid that at any cost, and we'll try to get the budget to balance with the money we have. The problem is that Vermonters are actually more than taxpayers; they're also users of services, and they depend on state government to provide those services. And the most graphic example is the. Um, the bridge closing out over Lake Champlain. Well, you know, some people say that's New York's responsibility. The point is still the same. For the 3,400 people that rely on that bridge to get to work and for the businesses, that that's clearly an important part of uh, making life a prosperity of Arizona to everybody in the state. So, we're, the truth is, we're all taxpayers, we're all users of services, and that as you're thinking about policy, that the that there should be a balance in the way you're thinking about it. So I, I'm suggesting there's an excessive focus on revenues and the amount of money that we're um, that's coming in at current tax rates, and not the, a similar level of focus on uh, the uh, the resources or the services the states provide. And what, what a suggestion I have along that lines is some states, and I think Vermont should do this should have a current services budget. The current services budget is a budget that looks ahead, and I would say that the Vermont should produce a current services budget by October 1st. But it's a way, it's essentially what it is, is a statement of how much it would cost to provide the services Vermont had last year. How much it would cost going forward in the, in the fiscal year that you're, you're facing. So you have some idea of what it would cost to provide the existing services to Vermonters. And then when you get your revenue estimates and there's a gap, you can look at, okay, we're not pretending that uh, all of the, the improvements, you know, obviously you can get efficiency improvements, you can always get efficiency improvements. But we're not pretending that we're, um, in order to balance the budget, that we're not cutting services. Because services are what's being cut when you, um, when you, when you take the, uh, about, uh, the uh, manage the money approach. So the first thought is, um, Vermonters are both taxpayers and citizens or, and users of services and that it, it would be important, I think, I think it would be important uh, in the budget process to actually have some balance in the way the analysis is done and comes in front of you so that you can make the kinds of choices that would reflect that. So the, um, just to go through, uh, what I want to do mainly is talk about the budget and talk about the, another way of looking at the problem that you're facing. Just kind of lay out the problem and suggest another way to approach it. Obviously the recession, we've had revenue downgrades. This is what we've been hearing about since 
April of 2008, that through November, when it was finally a relatively level, you know, no downgrade in revenue within uh, November, which was the first evidence that there might be good news, but, you know, nobody's uh, holding their breath. Um, <coughs> in terms of general fund spending, the, uh, from this chart from 2005 to 2008, you see a growth line that, you know, is, who knows if that's the growth line that you need to sustain services or, or not, but that was the growth line we had. If you, the blue line, the blue bars represent uh, general fund spending. So since 2008, 2009, 2010, general fund spending has gone down and it's been filled uh, primarily with federal stimulus money. To, and and even, even with federal stimulus money, uh, growth in spending for state services is, has flattened, but there is still growth in um, general spending. The JFO projections, you know, 88 million in November, they're now saying 150 million, which I agree with, um, and then, you know, deficits on out. We don't need to harp on that. But what, this is what I wanted to get to, which is, um, if you look at a 10-year period, what this line represents is um, expenditures on, a, on essentially a 10-year trend line, if you project it forward from the last 10 years, that this would be what um, the growth in general fund expenditures would look like. This is the, as of 2009, this is the revenue line. You've seen from JFO charts that look something like this. I think what's noticed, and so you see revenues drop for two years and they're projected to um, start growing again. And, but what's notable about this to me is that these two lines are parallel. Usually what you would see, which means that in our lifetimes, you're not going to have a balanced budget if you keep spending and keep collecting revenues at those levels. And the difference between those two lines is about $200 million. So the, um, when I started looking at this, the, I was thinking we're supposedly in a recession. What that should mean is that we have a dip in revenues and recovery, um, although th that would imply a, a cyclical recession, not, the, not getting into the question that Ed was raising about whether or not it is a cyclical, cyclical recession. But you should see something that is uh, where the revenues decline and come back, and that the growth line essentially touches the revenue line at both ends. So you have a, a temporary problem. But that's not what we see here. Here, and what we've and this was a quote from Neil Lundeville uh, when he was talking about negotiations with state employees that they were looking for 17 million dollars in long-term ongoing savings, and that's because they're looking at that and saying we need to get that blue line down to the red line or something like that if we're not going to raise revenues which makes sense, unless you have a different analysis of the problem. And this is why, what I would like to suggest, is that if you remove, and this is to divide the problem into the structural part of the problem and the, and the, the cyclical part of the problem, which I would suggest is what we have in Vermont. And so this green line, the green dotted line, is, um, is somewhat arbitrary, but it's basically an attempt to identify what's spending growth would be like if we didn't have to pay for health care cost increases in the budget, in the state budget. So the, what you see if you, if you take health care spending growth out of the budget, that you end up with below the green line something that looks like a traditional cyclical temporary problem. In other words, you can fill, it's a hole and you can fill it and you can fill it with temporary measures. You can use rainy day funds, you can use temporary cuts, you can use Temporary revenues, you can use federal funds, um, you, can you can deficit spend because it's for a finite period of time. Above the line, what you have is the structural portion of the problem, with the, namely healthcare. It looks something like this. This is not news to you, but overall uh, growth in um, healthcare costs has been between 10 to 8 and 10 percent for the last 10 years, a year. So. Uh, eight, eight to ten percent a year. So that means, in the legislature's increase in healthcare costs has been about nine percent a year, which is right in that range. But the general fund's obligation, according to the JFO projections, has been about fifteen percent a year. 